Hey, my name's <clears throat> Michael Boyce, and I'm just um, grateful and blessed to have another day and also a time to just share with you uh, my thoughts um, surrounding the book that I chose uh, for this semester to read about Discipleship Christ is Call to Discipleship by James Montgomery Boyce. Uh, this is what my copy uh, looks like. Um, it was interesting <clears throat> for me as a young minister to uh, be in a series uh, at the church that I serve uh, on discipleship as I was reading uh, this book. It was also on our accepted um, one of the books for uh, this class to do a book report on uh, so I want to give you some of my thoughts first of all it was um, the author was James Montgomery Boyce uh, no bias there because my last name's Boyce but I spell mine B-O-Y-C-E he spells his B-O-I-C-E but he was the um, a great man uh, a, a Bible teacher an author a pastor uh, he pastored um, a great uh, church over in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, called the 10th Street Presbyterian Church. Uh, he was known also uh, for uh, his comments and his um, <clears throat> um, on Scripture authority and inerrancy, and he also <clears throat> was on uh, one of the... Um, kind of radio broadcast called the Bible Study Hour. So he had a a lot of a lot of great things going on for him. Um, I have heard him speak, not in person, but on some of the recordings. Uh, so what a great man of God. He spoke the truth. Uh, he stand on the he stood on the um, um, the authority and the inerrant and inspired and breathed out word of God and 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 what a great man and and also uh, what a great book. Crisis call to discipleship. If we are going to be disciples, uh, we need to understand discipleship and definitely um, a disciple making disciples. So there was about four parts uh, in this uh, book. Uh, you could break it down uh, in, in, in this sense. Uh, the first part was the meaning of discipleship. The second part was the path of discipleship. The third part was the cost of discipleship. And the fourth part was the rewards of discipleship. Real quick, the meaning of discipleship, um, it was pretty much uh, centered around what we know. Uh, the call of discipleship where <clears throat> the Lord Jesus uh, met his first disciples on the sea, on the shores of the Sea of Galilee where he called them to uh, follow him or the famous words that we read out of our Bibles is follow me. P Boyce uh, brings um, his readers and, and myself uh, to the words that Jesus spoke on discipleship and it, you will find it Matthew, Mark, and John two powerful words I just mentioned follow me um, uh, and, and he goes into some important parts and some elements of discipleship, I think they are important. First, he goes into how we uh, should recognize and be obedient. Also, uh, secondly, repentance. Third, submission. Fourth, I think it's very important. All these are important, but commitment. And uh, fifth, uh, one he uses as the elements of discipleship was perseverance. You know, I heard a preacher one time said that, you know, we choose to be disobedient, that we should be obedient. And, and obedience is the start, is, is how, um, you know, when Jesus said, follow me, that was the invitation to service. So um, the meaning of discipleship. And also <clears throat> he goes into one of the chapters in the school of Christ. And that's how we should all be. We should all be learning. Uh, and, and, and we could use Matthew 11. He uses Matthew 11 about uh, coming to me, uh, you who are labor uh, and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And you take upon my yoke and learn from me. And that's Jesus's words and that we should learn and, and be in the school of Christ by his example and learning from Jesus. And then 
when he ends this this um, section, the first section, the meaning of discipleship, he says to a uh, pretty important, heard it probably most of uh, our lives if you've been following Christ uh, for many years, uh, taking up your cross or taking up uh, the cross. And, you know, that that uh, how how James Montgomery Boyce is encur encouraging, uh, encouraging words and how he encourages it is by self-denial, saying no to self and saying yes to God. And also, um, <clears throat> you know, if, if you're going to come after me, Jesus says, then you must deny yourself. You must take up your cross uh, daily. And follow me. There's those words again. Follow me. So that's pretty much a summary of the meaning of discipleship. And then he goes into the path of discipleship. You know, he uses Luke 6, uh, chapter, cha Luke 6, 46. Um, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? You listen, the, the, the path of discipleship, he starts off with the path of obedience. And obedience is essential, James Montgomery Boyce says. He also uses... Uh, chapter 1 in James, where it says to be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. It's like looking at your face uh, in, in the mirror. Uh, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. <clears throat> the, the path of discipleship first starts with the path of obedience. Then the path of service. You know, Jesus explains uh, to one of the scribes in Mark chapter 12, he says, you must love the Lord God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength and love your neighbor as yourselves. Love the Lord God and love your neighbors. Look, we, we are to have not only the path of obedience, but we should uh, have the path uh, of service. And thirdly, he uses the path of humility and how great uh, this is and how uh, we should see this because we many uh, men and women deal with the word pride, and 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 he wants to uh, say here, you know, the the path of discipleship is the path of obedience, the path of service, and the path of humility. Uh, not only is obedience essential, but humility is also essential part of discipleship. You see, he gives four barriers of rolling uh, away. He uses uh, about rolling away. Um, Pride, I would say, and, and, and different things getting in the way of us uh, uh, by being humble. And he uses A.W. Tozer's book, The Pursuit of God. Uh, what the four burdens roll away is the burden of pride, the burden of pretense, the burden of artificiality, um, and also the burden of self-struggle. And we all deal with that fleshly part of ourselves that want to creep back in and um, our pride uh, starts to show so we should walk the path of obedience the path of service and the path <coughs> of humility Boyce uh, says this I thought it was very interesting he said if we are to learn humility we must begin with God and see everything in relation to him that is we must acknowledge and embrace the fact that this is a God-centered and not a man-centered universe how great those words were that James uh, shared with us, uh, with me in this book. Uh, I thought it was uh, interesting. So uh, thirdly, the cost of discipleship, counting the loss. Um, he, he was talking about the things we must uh, get uncomfortable with. We must uh, look at um, counting the loss of some things. If we're going to follow Jesus Christ, there's going to be some things and he used the illustration about how a missionary told them that they were in and they wanted to see people uh, uh, put their faith and their trust and their belief in the Lord Jesus Christ where they like started to water down the gospel. And he 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 made it clear um, in, in the book that the missionary uh, was very, um, very disappointed in the fact that that some of the things that they should have counted as a loss, they didn't, and started things started um, to transpire because of that. And also, uh, the cost of discipleship, new relationships. You know, this is important as a believer of Christ, is that when you start to follow Christ, you need to cultivate new relationships. He uses the scripture about you, if you're going to um, be my disciple, Jesus says, and I'm paraphrasing about how you must hate your mother and your father and your brother and your sisters uh, to be my disciples and that's that's 
a tough verse for all of us. But, you know, in the sense, he wasn't saying that we literally uh, hate them, but we must put Christ first. So the cost of discipleship, counting the loss and also new relationships. And then he uses Luke chapter 9 for no turning back and how if we put our hands to the plow that if we look back we are not fit or useful or or we're useless to the kingdom of God so <clears throat> that's the third section the cost of discipleship and he ends it with I think what is very important is the reward of discipleship you know um, since I have followed Christ uh, it's not been a uh, all peaches and cream there's been some trials and tribulations and storms and you know that's when our faith has grown and 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 our faith grows in those um storms and trials james says you know we count it all joy when we fall into various trials because the testing of our faith will pre produce endurance uh, in us and and we can be mature complete and lacking nothing uh during <clears throat> this life so the rewards of discipleship he starts off by the happy christian he uses the be attitudes to kind of lay out this whole chapter about um uh you know blessed is the man how happy is the man who is poor, poor in spirit uh, uh you know uh the rewards of discipleship you you're a happy christian you know it's not always easy and that's when he goes into the second part you know present blessings but uh plus persecutions you know blessed is the man who is persecuted for righteous sake for the kingdom of heaven is his you know in this life you know rewards of discipleship uh, we are happy, but things are going to come and we're going to be persecuted, but the Lord uh, will bless us through it. And thirdly, he says, uh, he uses, uh, which, you know, all uh, preachers, ministers, people that uh, believe in, uh, I hope everyone believes in the Great Commission. Uh, I definitely do disciples, making disciples, how we should go into all the world and preach the gospel, uh, making disciples and baptizing Um Everyone in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching, um, teaching um, what the Lord Jesus has commanded. And he says, and I'm paraphrasing, that he will be with us to the end of the ages. You know, surely, he says, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. He ends it, Christ with us always. You know, thankful for the uh, promises of the Lord Jesus, how you know, we are to do these things. We we are to be disciples and there's some things that we're going to lose and there's uh, <clears throat> some things that will cost us and there's um, a meaning to discipleship and there's a path and, and it starts with being obedient and into service and also uh, with humility. Uh, I think that's very important. So, uh, you know, God's with us. Uh, and it's because of the Lord Jesus Christ that we have that relationship with God. Um, you know, he'll be with us to the end of the ages. You know, uh, my analyst on the um, on the entire book is that it's a great read. Uh, it will um, spark or ignite like it did for me uh, a, a series on disciple making or disciples making disciples um, um, in the local church. So I, I do recommend each and every one of you reading this book. Um, it'll definitely help not only your personal life, but it will help uh, your life as a pastor or a disciple um, commission uh, to um, furthering the gospel. And um, being someone who is just an example where others can see the, uh, the fire within you for others to get on board and how we can continue to make a difference in this world where we live. I hope everyone has a great evening.